Within this right TMCC pattern, we have a head that's side bent to the left, rotated slightly left, and we also have a more prominent ear from a straight on view on the left, and we also have a chin that's slightly deviated to the left. In addition, usually you see a lower left eye as well. I've gotten a lot of requests to complete the trifecta of the PRI pattern. We've talked about the lower body, the left AIC portion of it. We've talked about the right BC, the upper body portion of it. And now we're going to talk about the cervical spine and above, which is the right TMCC portion of this pattern. But in reality, all of these things are connected. We just separated them out into several different videos so that they're digestible. Before I get into this video though, I want to make it very clear that this video is for educational purposes only. We should not ever under any circumstances self-diagnose anything that's happening within our body, especially when it comes to the cervical spine, the neck and above, because this is such a complex area. There is so much going on here and it would be irresponsible of me to give you advice for what to do in this area. It would be irresponsible for anyone to watch this video and think that they know what to do with their cervical spine. So this is strictly only so that people can understand how the cervical spine and head is related to these other two common things that we talk about, like the right BC and the left AIC. Let's do a very quick recap of what we do know. If you're looking for more information, I will link the left AIC, right BC videos down in the description below. We got a higher right hip to start in this left AIC pattern, a right hip that's biased towards internal rotation, left hip that's more further forward and biased towards external rotation. That causes the sacrum bone to face the direction of the right. So we have this lumbar spine that's oriented to the right and the spine as a whole that's oriented to the right. Now, because all this is going right, we have to counter rotate back to the left. And we do that in our thoracic spine. So we're going to turn a little bit more this way, which is going to bring the right shoulder forward and bring the left shoulder higher in addition to some other asymmetrical considerations here. But I'm just simplifying this. So we've got a higher left shoulder and we have a lower right shoulder to begin with. This right scapula is biased towards internal rotation, more of this wing state. The left scapula is biased towards external rotation and a little bit more of this state where it is closer to the spine. Now, this is where we can tie it into the neck. So we've got a neck in this pattern of the right TMCC that is in right stance. When we say a neck is in right stance, it means that when we are on our right foot in that stance phase of gait, the head is going to turn left and side bend slightly left. It's the opposite when we're on our left foot. That would mean our head is side bent to the right and slightly turned right. So we have this head that's sort of tilted to the left and rotated left. And now we can think about how that actually is going to take form within the vertebrae themselves. Let's do a little close up view right here. And I've bent him into this position so many times, he's, he's kind of stuck there to a certain extent. But we can see what's happening right here because we have this side bend to the left a little bit. This atlas bone right here, which sits directly underneath the occiput, this bone right here, the base of the skull, is also going to be pushed up on the right side. So now I've got this smaller skull model and this will help show the intricacies of the cranial bones. Now these cranial bones do move, but it's not going to be 100% representative of how they actually move within a skull because this is a plastic model. So it's not gonna be perfect, but it will illustrate the point. So if we're looking at from the back, this is the right side, this is the left side. If I have a cervical spine that's pushing up on the right side, we're going to have this occiput right here also pushed up on the right. However, we are also going to have, because of the influence of rotation, this occiput's going to go a little bit to the left. And that's going to cause the atlas right here to be relatively to the right. However, you still have this occiput rotating and moving left. These bones right here, here and here, are called your temporal bones. These are massively influential bones, and you can think of these, if we're trying to draw parallels, as the innominate bones on your pelvis. So these temporal bones are going to be an external rotation on the left, internal rotation on the right. So this temporal bone on the left right here is going to flare out. And I wish that it did this on this cranial model a little bit better, but it doesn't. But you can understand how if this bone flared out, it would move out to the side a little bit more. However, right here on the right, it's going to be flared inwards into internal rotation. This is your maxilla right here. And this is very much tied to the position of the sphenoid. So if this goes right, this is going to follow it right. 
Now we can also tie this together a little bit in terms of the maxilla relationship to the temporal bone relationship and the sphenoid. So we've got, again, this maxilla that's going right because the sphenoid is going right. And because we have this external rotation of the temporal bone on the left, internal rotation of the bone on the right, we are going to have this jaw follow the position of those temporal bones. So this jaw is going to deviate to the left. We talked about a lot of different things right here, so let me recap this right TMCC pattern. So we have a cervical spine that's oriented to the right, yet side bent to the left and rotated left. Because of this, we have an occiput right here that's pushed higher up on the right. So it's tilted like that. And it's also rotated slightly to the left. We have this temporal bone right here on the left, just like the pelvis, in external rotation flared out. On the right side, just like the pelvis, it's internally rotated or flared in. In terms of objective biomechanical testing, these people are going to have a harder time side bending to the right because they're side bent left and they're gonna have a harder time rotating to the left within their cervical spine. And they're also gonna have a harder time moving the jaw to the right when this jaw is forward or protruded. So to address this right TMCC pattern, basically what we want to do, and this is again simplified, bring the occiput down on the right side, be able to turn the sphenoid left, and be able to get temporal bone internal rotation on the left and external rotation on the right. Here is an example exercise from Postural Restoration Institute, or PRI, where they consider it more of this repositioning drill for the cervical spine and higher. I do not recommend you do this. This is only to give you an idea and for education of how we can go about addressing these issues and what it generally looks like. So to set up for this, we need to be in this 90-90 position where we have our whole foot and part of our shin just sort of flat and relaxed on a box that allows our knees to be bent at a 90 degree angle, as well as our hips. We don't have to have our foot up against a wall necessarily. We also want to have a towel roll about two inches in diameter underneath the cervical spine. It's going to be a little bit different in terms of diameter depending on the size of your neck. So just make sure it's comfortable and around two inches. We are obviously not using this whole towel. It is just going to be rolled up relative to what Trevor needs right here. So the first thing we want to do is just place our hands on our low ribs. Just chill, make sure you're relaxed. And now what we're gonna do is, Trevor, I'm going to have you exhale through your mouth, nice, soft, dig down just slightly with your heels, and you're gonna perform that tilt. As you do that, you're gonna look up towards that wall behind you in the ceiling, tilt your chin up towards the ceiling slightly, not overdoing it, just a little bit. So now his eyes are going that way, back towards the ceiling and the wall behind him. His chin is facing towards the ceiling and he's got a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt so he feels his hamstrings engaged just two out of 10. That's all we want. Now what we're gonna do is keep your head in the same position. Take your eyes, look down towards your feet without the head moving. Okay, now what we're gonna do is open the mouth very slightly and then push the jaw forward and to the left. Just a little bit, again, just Three out of 10, that's all we're looking for here. It's not excessive, it's not stressful at all. Just a little bit. Okay, now he's gonna hold this position for five seconds and he's not gonna do anything. And I mean anything, just holding the position. He's feeling a little bit of hamstrings. His whole body is relaxed other than his hamstrings and a little bit of his jaw here. And then after that five seconds, he's going to relax everything and then inhale through his nose, not using his neck at all, staying totally chill and using his diaphragm, you should feel that expansion happening and then he can just relax entirely and he's gonna do the whole process over again. On that final exhale, just make sure you're exhaling through relatively pursed lips so it's but make sure it's full. Let's go through that one more time, okay? So nice full exhale, tilt, dig down a little bit, two out of 10, chin up towards the ceiling, eyes looking up. Okay, now hold that exhale, eyes down without moving the head and now open the mouth very slightly jaw forward and to the left just very slightly okay now holding that for five seconds not doing anything else not breathing after five seconds we're going to relax everything including the jaw hamstrings inhale without using the neck through the nose exhale pursed lips all the air out we're gonna do that four or five times. This is the short seated breathing with the left arm reach from Postural Restoration Institute. 
The purpose of this is to expand the left back with air and shut off the posterior neck on both sides. So to set up for this, we are up against a wall. In this position, we have a good degree of hip bend and knee bend right here, but our feet are flat on both sides. And we have just the mid back on the wall here. The upper back here is off the wall. The low back here is off the wall. So both are gonna be rounded. To start here, we're going to exhale and reach forward with both arms at an equal length. If you would like, you can rest your arms up against your knees or just slightly on top of them. We gotta make sure that the shoulders stay out of the ears. You don't wanna shrug up, we wanna keep them down. So now we have a lot of flexion and rounding in the back, but the mid back is still up against the wall. The low back is off, the upper back is off. The head is going to be forward a little bit and slightly down. Now we're gonna inhale and reach just the left arm a little bit further forward with the right, but the right keeps reaching but just now the left hand is ahead. And as we inhale through the nose, exhale, soft sigh. <sighs> With a big open mouth, it's like a faucet. If we're here, we're not gonna get as much air out, but we wanna open up the faucet, sigh it out, so we can get as much air out as we possibly can. And we're gonna feel those abdominals engage, specifically on the side, and we're gonna hold that as we inhale through our nose, reach a little bit further with the left every time. If you cannot reach the left any more forward, at least have the intention to, and that will help open up the left side. You're gonna feel stretch in your upper back when you inhale. Just make sure that you're getting a full exhale, feeling those side abs engage a little bit, holding onto them a little bit as you inhale, reach the left just slightly more forward. The two most common mistakes in this, the first one I already touched on is that people are going to shrug their shoulders. So the head is gonna come forward and it's gonna be down a little bit. We wanna make sure that we're keeping the shoulders out of the ears, just like that. And we can, again, keep our arms on our knees slightly if we need to, or just outside of them if we want. This is the supine hook line T8 extension drill from Postural Restoration Institute. The purpose of this is to improve pelvic position with the hamstrings and improve overhead mobility. So to set up for this, we have a PVC pipe in our hands, or you use a broomstick if you really wanted to. And our grip is shoulder width apart. And we also have a little ball in between the knees, which is keeping our knees in line with our hips and also our feet. And we also have a step here, or you can use books as long as it's a symmetrical height. But we need to make sure that that step or those books are large enough and long enough so that we can keep our whole foot flat, maintaining pressures of the heel and also the ball of the big toe and the little toe where the ball of the foot is. Not the actual toes themselves, but right here. And now what we're gonna do is perform a pelvic tilt by dragging back with our heels in particular, and that is going to recruit those hamstrings. And our tailbone's gonna slightly lift off of the ground. Now, Trevor, I want you to reach that PVC pipe for the ceiling right there. And as you do so, I don't want his sternum to depress. It should just be a nice reach, and if his sternum had a laser pointer coming out of it, it would still be pointed at the ceiling, not somewhere over there. Now, I want you to open your mouth and just sigh all the air out. Perform a nice full long exhale and that should recruit your side abs on both sides. As you do that, I want you to keep your six pack as relaxed as you humanly can. So he's not trying to consciously crunch or recruit any abs. It'll happen naturally because of the exhale and an extended exhale. And then once you feel those side abs, I want you to pause, inhale through your nose and his hands will naturally drift back further. And that's a really good sign that we got a nice full exhale and the inhale expanded our chest to push our arms back. So it's only gonna be about one to three inches at a time and that's perfectly fine because we're gonna be doing multiple breath cycles. One thing that people will want to do in this exercise inevitably is that they will want to push their arms back as they inhale consciously. And that's not going to be getting the proper expansion that we're looking for, which is going to naturally push the arms back themselves. So your exhale should be long enough and full enough to where you can feel those side abs. And if you're keeping those side abs on as you inhale to a slight extent, air is a gas that's going to follow the path of least resistance. So if this is on, holding these ribs down, your chest will naturally expand to push those arms back naturally. Just let it happen on its own, as long as you're maintaining that very slight reach. I know that was a lot of information, but it's important to understand that all of this is connected. The left AIC, right BC, right TMCC, and additional layers of compensation. The good news is that a lot of these PRI drills are taking into account what's happening up here. And 
a lot of the times, if you can create a positive adaptation at the pelvis or the rib cage, then you can see good things happen up here too without even directly addressing it. But because when we go into right stance or left stance and shift back and forth, we're going to have the head and cranium do certain things. The cervical spine is going to do something. The rib cage is going to do something. The pelvis is going to do something. So it's important for us to be able to fluidly shift between these states. There's an additional layer of compensation on top of the right TMCC pattern. This is often in people who have other additional layers of compensation within the rib cage and pelvis. These people are probably extended on both sides. Sometimes they've been in car accidents. There's a lot of different things and I don't want to go into too much detail on it because it's so complex. People with a right torsion are going to present a little bit differently than a right TMCC pattern on the table and they're going to be pretty locked up within their rib cage and their pelvis in all likelihood and these people definitely need to see a qualified physical therapist or someone who can handle these types of issues so if you suspect either of these cases are you i'd highly recommend that you go see someone in person that knows what they're doing but generally what we see here is people present a little bit different visually they're going to have a chin that appears to be going right they're still probably going to have a more prominent left ear and the left eye is still usually lower, but that chin position can throw people off a little bit because in the right TMCC pattern, it looks like their left face is just closer together. However, on this, this right torsion pattern, what we often see is that this jaw deviates to the right and it can throw people off a little bit. The difference between a right TMCC and a right torsion pattern is what's going on with the occiput, the base of the skull right here. It's going to try to even itself out after the establishment of the right TMCC. So what's gonna happen is because originally it's pushed up and rotated to the left. In this position, what it's going to want to do is push down or get pulled down on the right side. It's going to try to go back right. 